Do not obsess about an algorithm update, obsess about the user. Because that's what Google's doing. So if you obsess about the user, you're focusing on the right thing, not the wrong one. That's huge advice there. Hey, welcome back everyone to another episode of Eat, Sleep, and Invest. I'm your host, Brian Driscoll, and we have Neil Patel. What's going on, Neil? Uh, not much. How's life? It's going, it's going. Hey, so for anybody who doesn't know Neil, Neil crushes it. You're like the godfather of SEO, right? I don't know um, about that, but I got started early in the digital marketing arena. Yeah, give everyone a little bit of background on uh, just on everything you have going on. Sure. So I blog at neilpatel.com about marketing. Uh, I run an ad agency called NP Digital, um, which stands for Neil Patel Digital. And we help companies of all sizes grow from really large corporations like Fortune 100 to even SMBs and mid-sized companies. Um, some of our clients, funny enough, are uh, property managers. Some of them are uh, uh, decent-sized companies that have maybe a few thousand uh, units uh, between different buildings that they own. But yeah, we just help companies get more traffic, get more leads, get more sales, get more you know, um, tenants, whatever you may want to end up calling, depending on the industry. And yeah, I've just been doing this for like 20 plus years now. Kind of love it. Yeah. All right, cool. So, so talking about SEO, so you've been in this since like Google started pretty much. And I know, what do you think the most important part of the, of SEO is? The most like, important part of SEO is providing the most value to the user. At the end of the day, the sites that have the best content, the best experience, the best product, the best service are the ones that are going to win. For example, you can optimize the site however much you want, but if everyone's searching for cheap laptop and you're offering the same laptop, if you're offering the same laptop as me, but you're at a thousand dollars and I'm at five hundred dollars, I'm the one who's going to eventually rank higher because everyone's like half the cost for the same product, so everyone's going to be clicking on my listing and buying from me. That's an example of like, it doesn't matter how much you optimize, right? It is important, don't get me wrong, but like a good product and a service really goes a long way. Yeah, I agree there too, because Google's primary job is to give answers to people what they're searching, what's what's most relevant. Yeah, so I think a lot yeah. of people get held up on that. You got it right. When someone does a search, they're searching for a solution to their problem. Cheap laptop, uh, you know, what's the best way to make a basement? Is it ICF or is it, you know, you do the wood, then you add the concrete. Uh, is LVL better than steel framing? Or, you know, you know how are steel studs, can they bear weight? Like, people are looking for questions to an answer. And then it's the question is, who provides the best answer? Now, now you do you still do a lot of your writing yourself? I know you used to. I, I, I do. We have a team that updates a lot of my old pieces of content. I don't write as much as I used to, but I still write quite a bit of content. Yeah. Now, what do you find, um, not necessarily between long form and short form, but talking about relevance, things like that, do you still um, recommend like the pillar posts, having a long informational one that breaks off into more detailed pieces? Or how do you recommend people do that if they want to do a pretty detailed informational piece? Well, well let's go back a little bit. Most of the people who are listening are in real estate. What do they specifically do in real estate? Yeah, mainly investing. These guys are buying houses, fixing them flipping them or keeping them as rentals are they raising money some of them will be yeah and then some of them are looking for better opportunities of course right so you want to end up creating content where people want to end up working with you partnering with you investing in you uh, working with you could be they find you better deals learning from you or doing something at a cheaper rate so that way they can help you out and learn from you um, investing in you, of course, gets you more capital so you can end up buying more properties. But let's say you create a sh social content. And if you create a content on like, this is why you shouldn't buy a house. These are the bad buys. Everyone's saying that the market's going up and there's no, or market's going down and there's no deals. Here's an example of how you can make money in a bad economy. Here's examples of what you shouldn't buy you know, even if the market is frothy or bad, these are just bad deals. And like, if you tear something down on social content, I think that'll do really well. Um, if you are trying to create your own website, um, or if you should ideally create your own website with the portfolio of all the products you did, the returns, 
I would also start creating articles on like what to look for when you're renovating a house. How do you find a diamond in the rough? You know, um, how ugly houses uh, create better returns than beautiful houses. And then you can talk about how you can buy the ugly houses, what you need to do, what things sell, like kitchens really sell a house, um, school districts sell a house. The other thing that I ended up breaking down, like in real estate, if I was doing a real estate website is I would be very, very specific. So with my content, I wouldn't just do generic stuff on like, here's how to get rich doing real estate. That doesn't work really well. You got to get very granular. Like here's how you fix up low end houses. Here's how you make money on luxury coastal real estate. Here's how you make money on multifamily uh, complexes that have more than 100 units. Here's how you do well with fourplexes, fiveplexes, sixplexes, et cetera, like small amounts. So I'm getting very specific, as you can see, right? Like if I was into high-rise luxury condos, I would have a blog just for high-rise uh, luxury condos. I would also talk about things like, hey, it's harder to flip these unless you get appreciation because of HOA dues. So the rental economics aren't as great due to the HOA dues. Okay, yeah. Yeah, a lot of the phrases like our guys are targeting like sell my – like people would Google sell my house fast, sell my house for cash, uh, cash home buying companies, things like that. Yeah. So so if you want to do like sell my home fast, you can write articles on like what's the quickest way to sell your house at a good price? And then you create like step-by-steps. Here are the companies that help with that. This is what you should look for when you're talking to these people. This is how you know you're getting a good deal. Um, here's how long you can expect it to close and get the cash, things like that. Yeah, gotcha. Um, do, I'm sure you've seen it. What do you think about all these uh, AI content writing things that came out, like OpenAI, Jasper, all that kind of stuff? They're not bad to get you a start, but they don't really write a great piece of content. Yeah, that's what I've seen too. It's, it's like you almost have to think from the user standpoint, like you were saying before, what's going to answer the what's going to answer the problem? Give them that stuff and then optimize it so that the so Google and the search engines can actually know what it's like, know what it's about. Also, exactly, you got to write. How do you how do you make like I see a lot of people when they're writing their content, they're not easy to read and they're not personal. Like, do you have any tips for people, especially people yeah. that don't write a lot, on how to make that relatable yeah so the the biggest one is you want to use the words you and i a lot now here's an example of it. let's say i'm writing an article on like how to sell your home really fast i'm like doesn't it suck to list your house and wait 60 80 90 days on average i know the feeling i remember when i sold my house a few years ago it sat on the market for six months i kid you not and that wasn't that bad. If you actually look at this quote by the Real Estate Association of America, the average home sits on the market 73 days. Now, here's a crazy thing. Why should it be that way? There must be a way to sell your home really fast, right? Wouldn't that be a dream for all of us? I know it would have been for me. But here's a crazy thing. With technology and with real estate being such an old market, there are now ways to actually sell your home really quickly and save on a lot of fees. So here's how you can actually sell your home really quickly. And I wish someone would have told me this when I was selling my last home. I just made that up. No, but, no, I can tell you got a lot of experience. It's off the cuff. Yeah. I wrote yeah. a lot of articles over my years. <laughs> No, and that's good too because especially for people that don't know how – not necessarily don't know how to write but don't write a lot. A lot of people I think get held up in their head. It's like, oh, I got to do this, do this, make this real proper. And uh, like you were just saying, that's really relatable. If someone reads that, they're like, oh, this guy seems legit. Maybe I should reach out to him. Yeah. But you, you, you get how I'm relating, telling stories, using the words you or I, talking about my own experiences – that, those are all examples. Any stats and data you can use helps. Uh, I made up the National Real Estate Association of America or whatever I call that. I don't know if that even exists, but there must be some stats somewhere on how long a home sits on the market before it sells in the United States. Yeah. All right, cool. That, that makes sense. So let's talk a little bit about link building, right? So back in the day, we used to be able to spam links out and rank like crazy. Like, what do you, what do you think now? What, what's going on with link building these days? 
Yeah, so links are super important. Think of links as votes. The more people voting for a president, the more chances are that president wins. The say the reason I say chances is because it's also state by state basis where winner takes all in the United States. But generally speaking, for most election, it is whoever gets the most of vote, votes wins. It's the same goes with the internet. Whoever gets the most votes, but on the internet, a vote being a link. So the more websites that link to yours, the better off you are. But there's some caveats to it. If I was running for presidency and Obama went out on campaign and said, I'm voting for Neil, you should, you know, uh, elect him. And then President Bush came out and said, I'm voting for Neil as well, you should go and vote for him. Those are people who are known to be in politics and were presidents. So if they say, hey, you should vote for Neil, there's more likely chance that I'm going to, uh, those votes count for more. You get what I mean? Even though they apply for one vote, they really sway a lot more people because they're ex-presidents. So that's an example of how you want to get quality. So if it's an authoritative site, like a New York Times, CNN, or anything that's related, like if you're in real estate, and uh, have you heard of Bigger Pockets? Oh, yeah. Of course you have. That, that's an example of a popular real estate website, like if they link to you or Zillow or one of those sites, that helps more with rankings. So it's relevancy and authority. So if you get either of those, it helps more. The spammy stuff doesn't really do well or carry much, and it's just short term, and that's not going to help you win in the long run. Yeah, what do you think about the guys out there selling link packages, things Don't like that? It's like, give me three grand or whatever. It doesn't work. Yeah, I see that too. It works for like short period of time, and then your website could disappear or whatever, you know? Yeah, some companies sell link packages, but they're manually done and they're not buying them, which is the key. You don't want them to buy them. And they look at your website first and they actually look at your content and they try to figure out if they can actually build you links. Because if someone just sells you a link package and they don't know your content and they don't know your space, it's going to be really hard for them to fulfill unless they're buying them and you don't want any bot links going to your website. Yeah, how about PBNs? I know. No. Avoid those too. Short run, maybe they'll help, but long run, they're definitely going to hurt you. Yeah, give everyone a little, just like a short description on what a PBN is if they don't know what it is. So PBN stands for Private Blog Network. That's someone owning a lot of domain names and their own websites, uh, and then they'll link to you from their own properties. So it's really easy for them to add links because they control the inventory. Yeah, basically manipulating the search engine, or at least trying to. All right. On uh, like on links, so, so these guys are all local. Ma mainly, all investors are local. Um, what are your thoughts on going after? Like, I know a lot of people donate to the Cub Scouts, things like that, and they get links back from those websites. They're not necessarily real estate, but they're local. What do you think on those? Um, those aren't too effective. You shouldn't be donating for links. You should be donating because you want to support a cause. You want ideally links from local communities and sites and don't try to donate to get a link just get it because you earned it because the quality of your content or you're doing great stuff within the community so basically yeah right right kick ass content and have people link back to you exactly like a great example of this i was at the grocery store this weekend saw some boy scouts okay i could have kept you know i gave them money for some popcorn they sell popcorn i gave the kid a hundred dollars he wasn't selling anything and it's hot here in vegas so I gave him $100, I took a bag of popcorn. I'm pretty sure a bag of popcorn doesn't cost $100. I, don't, I didn't ask him what it costs. I just took something because it makes him feel like he sold it. And he got $100, so he was ecstatic. He tried to give me a change, and I didn't care. I was like, no, nah, keep the change. That's cool. I didn't ask him for anything, right? I didn't care if for more popcorn. I didn't care for any additional benefit. I didn't care for them to be like, hey, do you got a website? Can you link to me or any of that? The purpose of donating is because it makes you happy. It fulfills something in your heart. Um, and don't do it for links. Yeah. And you know what? You probably made that kid's day too. He was probably pumped. I don't know if he was pumped. His dad said thank you. He technically was there with his dad, so he wasn't really Pretty. by himself. But um, uh, I remember his dad came after me as we were walking away because I only picked one bag of popcorn. He's like, you should try this one too. And he gave it to me. And I was like, okay, I didn't want to be rude, right? So then yeah. uh, I, I wasn't trying to take the popcorn because I wanted, look, Boy Scouts, I don't know how that kind of stuff works. But I was like, kid selling something. He's doing something good in life, learning some skills. He's not there selling drugs or whatever. And when it's 100 degrees outside, you got to respect someone's hustle for trying to sell popcorn in terrible weather. 
hundred percent. So now, so you write your blogs, right? You, you have all this, all this content in your website, by the way, how much, how many visitors do you currently get organically on your site now on neilpatel.com? Honestly, I don't look millions, but I don't look Yeah, It looked at me. I, I checked that. It looked like three, 4 million uh, from what I saw per month. It, we, we, we stopped checking and we have so many other sites too that are really popular, but like I just stopped checking. Yeah. Cause like, it doesn't matter. All I look at on a monthly basis, how many qualified leads are we driving and how many of those leads convert into opportunities and of those opportunities, how many close traffic's a vanity number, right? Like I can write articles on how to get the most amount of Instagram followers and get a shitload more traffic, but that's not going to get me any big clients. You know, that brings up a good point too. So say, say we're talking about traffic. Um, we got like transactional traffic, informational traffic, and you're talking about looking at the KPIs. What what do you look at when doing content and trying to bring the right types of people to your website? So in Google Analytics, there's something called first touch and last touch. It'll actually show you what caused someone to first come to your website and then convert and what caused them to convert or what, what did they see right before they converted. So then you can see like some of these informational keywords that are just top of level that are top of funnel that really help get you people into your community. And then you can end up going down and then you can see what are the keywords that really drive the majority of the sales, but you need both, right? Cause you want to build awareness and the trust factor as well. And you can use tools like Uber suggest to find them out. You can put in any competitor URL and it'll tell you all their, um, it'll tell you all their keywords that they're going after and what's driving them traffic. Now Uber suggest that's Uber suggest.com, right? Uh huh. Okay, so that's a tool. You when did you make that? Was that like six years ago or something? No, someone else made it, and then we bought it for like 120 grand years and years ago, and then we improved upon it. Okay, yeah, I heard you talking a long time ago. It's before you charge anything for it. You're like, we're just going to give it away for free and keep making it awesome and figure out how to make money on it in the future. Which I don't think yeah. you even really charge a lot for it now. Like I think like 10, 20 bucks or something like that. 30, I don't know, somewhere in the price range. That, 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 that's what happens when you have a lot of people. You end up forgetting a lot of stuff because there's just so many different divisions and people and, you know, we're expanding so fast. I think we just added Germany. We're looking to add in France, Italy soon, Spain, Portugal. Uh, we'll add in Malaysia and Singapore soon. Not just for the tool. The tool is already works globally, but it's more so headcount and offices within these regions. So, so like you're obviously crushing it. Like, what are your goals now? Like what really, what's really making you tick? Is it growing, buying other businesses or growing your business or what? Growing my own business. We do buy other businesses. We bought a business in February for like eight and change. I think 8.6 is what we paid for it. Something like, I don't know exactly, but it was somewhere around that price tag. It was a Euro conversion or not Euro uh, pound conversion dollars to pounds. It was a company in the UK, but um, yeah, we keep buying stuff. Uh, we try to keep growing organically and we just love what we're doing want to create um, the biggest digital advertising or marketing agency out there. And I think we can, we probably have a long way to go, but if I fast forward five years, we'd probably be at two, 3000 employees. So hopefully we can keep growing and cranking. That's pretty solid. Um, yeah. And you have crazy, crazy growth too. Yeah. You're growing really quickly. Um, when you write your blogs, so how much, cause I know you send an email. What is it once a week? Twice a week, usually sometimes three. Okay. What made you come up with a PS in the, uh, the call to action in the PS section? It converts. If you send out emails, but PS, if you want to sell your house really quickly, click here. This works really well. You'll end up getting a lot of leads. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I see that a lot. I'm like, I'm like, that's genius. You're sending out content, giving value. Like most people send out content. Hey, do you want to sell your house? Or like just asking for things you're giving something. And it, it's like, hey, here's an awesome piece of content on how to rank, how to rank with these ten steps. And then, oh, by the way, if you need help, we can help you. Exactly, because a lot of people won't do it. So then you're just selling them at the same time, but you're selling them without really selling them, because you're like more like you're selling by helping them. Right. And I noticed too that you have. Um, how do you choose the anchor text? Because it looks like you link twice per email, right? Uh, once, sometimes twice, uh, at least once though. And there's no anchor text. We do the anchor text based on what we think is going to get the most clicks. Okay. Gotcha. Do you use any, um, you have, you use, uh, you have heat mapping software too, that you guys own, right? Uh-huh. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So 
tell everyone that doesn't understand what heat mapping is a little bit about because they can grab that software from you as well. So think if you got a website, you're trying to get people to buy, sell their houses to you really fast. How, you're getting the traffic. How do you know they're clicking on your call to actions, your form fields, your phone numbers, and it's in the right place and you're optimizing how many leads you get from your website? The heat mapping software shows you where they're moving, their mouse movements, where they're clicking, where they're not, and what typically will drive the most, uh, what you need to adjust with your site so that way you can get the most revenue from those visitors. Yeah, which is huge, yeah, especially on conversion tracking. Yeah. Um, what, so what do you see coming on the local, local SEO space, like with Google and everything? Like what kind of changes are you anticipating? I, I don't, they make a lot of algorithm changes per day. Most of them are minor. I don't really look at like what new algorithm update they're going to do. I found that the key is you just do what's best for the user and you win in the long run. Short run, sometimes you get dinged, but long run, you typically win. Dude, that, don't, that's, don't obsess about an algorithm update, obsess about the user. Because that's what Google's doing. So if you obsess about the user, you're focusing on the right thing, not the wrong one. That's huge advice there. Like everyone go back and listen to that. Because people are always talking about, hey, what's Google doing? What's the algorithm? If you focus on what is going to help the user, it's playing by Google's rules and you should get rewarded. Like that's huge. Yeah, because most people are like, oh, I need to obsess about Google. Well, Google's obsessing about the user, so why would you obsess about Google? Obsess about the thing they're obsessing about because that's how you win. Exactly, yeah. Um, are you how how much do you do in the other spaces like Facebook, Google Pay per click, uh, TikTok, things like that? We do quite a bit. We do all of the main channels: Reddit, Pinterest, uh, Facebook, uh, TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter. Like the list goes on and on. What what's the uh, top one that most people wouldn't think about? We love LinkedIn. It works really well. Um, TikTok, funny enough, is is starting to do really well for people to generate leads, especially in real estate. But people ignore it. Are you uh, you talking about the paid ads on LinkedIn and uh, TikTok or organic? Organic, okay. like you can create a TikTok video on like here's how to sell your house in one week. You get step one, do this. Step two, do this. Step three, do this. Step four, this is how I know you got a good deal. Step five, like the deal, take it. Step six, don't like the deal, go here. And then rinse and repeat. That's all, yeah. And I do see this the tips like like you're talking about right there too. They're what's getting engagement. Uh-huh. That's what people want to see. All right, cool. Well, we're, we're almost out of time. What is the one tip that you'd give real estate investors in the SEO space? Great content. If you don't create good content, you're not going to rank well. Okay. That, yeah. Good answer. Good answer. Uh, is there anything else we missed just talking like on a basic level? Uh, be patient. You know, like even if you do SEO, whether you do it yourself or hire someone or it doesn't matter, don't expect the world within three to six months. You got to be patient. You got to be consistent. You got to do it for years and you'll really crush it, but you got to be patient. Yeah, that is true too. Cause yeah, a lot of people, I know even from experience way back in the day, you make a change on your website and then you keep tweaking it, to try to make it right or you're not patient and then you just go nowhere. Yep. Um, oh, hey, one other question I wanted to ask you on the, um, do you have any tips on ranking, not necessarily in the real estate space, but um, just in general in the news, news sections for like bigger publications? Right on card events, you can find out what's happening through tools like Answer the Public and uh, Google Trends. You can see what's hot right now, right on those, and it'll, you're more likely to show up in Google News. Cool. And, and if anybody need, wants to reach out to you or is looking for uh, your help, what's the best way for them to reach you? NP Digital. N as in Nancy, P as in Paul, digital.com. Hey, well, thanks for coming on, Neil. We appreciate you. Thanks for having me.